And then just sequel after sequel after sequel. There was no character development at all. Just that on pure technical levels. There are filmmakers that don't want it just to be an entertainment experience. Hello and welcome to Media Academy Online's Film Diet Podcast. In this next podcast, we're going to be talking about franchises. <laughs> Alright, so starting off in this podcast, let's talk about the Blade Runner. Yeah, first Blade Runner, Ridley Scott. <laughs> Harrison yeah. Fold. It was made in what early eighties, which the way I see it, uh, cross between sci-fi and film noir. Yep, has that very strong idea Blind. going on there. It's it's like the diary entry style voiceover that sort of reflects on what the the main uh, person is thinking and saying. Um, which version did you watch? The one with the voiceover. Uh, it's a bit of backstory to that, but the actual real cut doesn't have him wow. doing voiceover. And then yeah. like, the studio were like, people aren't going to know what's going on. We need to get Harrison Ford to do voiceover. And Harrison Ford was like, I ain't doing no fucking voiceover. <laughs> so he, on purpose, did the worst job he could in the really? voiceover. That's why it sounds really shit. You might not have picked up on it. No. But next time you well, do this watch is, it. Wow, this is beyond me. Well, I, mean, I guess I, I came in pretty pretty late to the... Yeah, I mean, yeah. I wasn't born when... <laughs> yeah, no, I wasn't born either. I was yeah. very late into the Blade Runner. Yeah, but, Funnily enough, I was probably, what, in my teens when I saw mm, it. But it's one of those films that really and visually stand up. Oh, my God. Those, the, like, the miniatures they use to create mm. all of those establishing wide shots. Oh, my God. The the vistas and the city. Mm. Yeah, you know, they filmed that, you know, that, those streets and the back lot, you mm. know, they built it up with the neon yeah. signs and all that yeah. fucking incredible so much steam and smoke yeah. you know and that's really it's, Scott's fucking it's great that scene where we had the flying craft and we mm. could actually see see the string on the craft yeah but that's fine that yeah, was great yeah, yeah. that's the beauty of it so there's so many different versions of the first film yeah there's the director's cuts there's the you know all these different cuts the one with voiceover because the one that got on Netflix is the one with the fucking voiceover and I noticed that I was yep. watching it. And I'm like, oh my god, this is hilarious because that's the one that everyone rags on and gives it shit for. Yeah, right. You know, some people it, it's like very it. film noir esque. It does. To it it is. It is. It yeah. Expands that whole film yeah. noir thing. You know, Guillermo del Toro, the mm-hmm. director. Yeah. He loves the voiceover one. That's the one he prefers. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. Anyway. And that's probably why he probably loves that film noir style. Yeah, I mean, it yeah. really does work in with it, but Harrison Ford really is <laughs> not giving it much effort. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but that's okay. No, yeah. I mean, him not giving much effort is still better than so many other actors yeah. putting in effort. So yeah. It was a bit slower, but back then all films were slower. Oh, yeah. So, you know, it, it took is, its time. It is a slow film, mm-hmm. um, and that is one complaint everyone kind of lobbies at it yeah. is that but it you know any film from early 80s they weren't they weren't Russian they Alien all, yeah they all took their time and that's fine mm. you just gotta appreciate the trends at the time mm. were that slower paced taking time to establish things it's a detective things. noir it like, is it and is. that's what they were like as well and they I think were... a lot of people forget that, mm. that they'd forget that it it's all about mixing that past with that future it's mm. not all about the future mm. and so it does have the tropes that you see mm. in a past film noir yep. film, yep. even though the setting is in the future. Mm. it's That's really all that's changed. They just said, we're going to change the setting yep. from New York or whatever it might yeah. be, this, the back Ch- streets Ch- in Chicago. New York, yeah. <laughs> to <laughs> this future. And it's a style that so many films, especially lately, seem to be copying that style oh. of sci fi. Yeah, that spawned a whole mm-hmm. genre. Yeah, Blade Runner literally is the DNA of you know cyberpunk manga. What we got? You got anime. Ghost in Shell. Ghost in Shell. Akira. You yep. got you know the list is endless. So many. So <laughs> so so many. It's almost like too many to go onto IMDb and you'll start going down the rabbit hole. <laughs> it's huge. Yeah. <laughs> anything. Anything. I mean, Altered Carbon on Netflix is mm-hmm. a TV show yeah. on Netflix. There's just Same. it's just an endless list. I keep you just see things all the time and you go oh, Blade Runner. Yep. Yeah. Blade Runner. Yeah. <laughs> and really, Scott, I mean, you can bash him all you want for some of his weaker stuff and his, his weaker films. And people bash him for Blade Runner as well. And I'm like, and it didn't do well when it came out. It was a flop. Yep. Yep. It didn't gain traction until like a decade or more later, to the mm. 90s. And that happened so much in the 80s. So many good films got fucked up like that. You know, Terry Gilliam's Brazil, John Carpenter's The Thing. You know, because of E.T. that came out and just sort of scooped up all the money. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think at that time, dark films, films that weren't 
bright and fun and mm-hmm. fuzzy. Um, no one wanted to see it. I think yeah. it was a, sort oh, of a dark period. There was very minimal music, if any. Yeah, it's very right. atmospheric. Yeah, Vangelis, about, yeah. the composer, is this very is a synth guy. He's a yeah. synth god. Yeah. And his music, he did Chariots of Fire mm-hmm. and Blade Runner and another Ridley Scott one, uh, 1492, the one about Chris Columbus. Anyway. Yeah. So it's all about creating an atmosphere rather than... Just the soundscapes and mm-hmm. the, the cityscapes and the, and the atmosphere. Yeah. It's just, you can't, it's, you, you can feel it. You know, it's like it's so thick. Yeah. And it's like, it's coming out your TV screen. That mm-hmm. steam and smoke and rain is literally coming out of the screen and you're feeling it. And the world, the noise, the crowds, the... Yeah, the, the lights, the neon the lights. lights and... Yeah, the, the, all of it, you know? It's yeah. just insanely well done. There are some elements that are very typical of previous films, like films that tried to be mm. futuristic, mm. But they didn't have things like LED lights mm. and CRT TV yeah. screens and yeah. things like, you know, all that sort of was put in there. So there was That's, there yeah. was a period where it was all like futuristic, but they had the technology of the time built in mm. the sets. And that gives it a little charm to That's it. That's what I almost prefer that, you know, yeah. when I see future films, like films in the future that have that kind of aesthetic, like mm. the first Alien, yeah. you know, has it. So that's futuristic analog. It's like Mm -hmm. analog tech in the future. Yeah. And even the new Blade Runner, they went back to that and paid homage to that. And, you know, I I just think it's more interesting, Mm -hmm. you know, instead of just seeing see-through screens, you know, transparent screens, and they're looking at like an iPad, but it's just like see-through. And they they could have done that. Like Mm. Star Star Wars, he was doing that stuff. Mm, Holograms. Holograms and and all that kind of stuff. So they mm. could have done it. But yeah, I mean, how did you find... Let's just discuss the film now Mm -hmm. more about like story. How did you... Did you find it understandable? Like, did you know where the story was going? And did you have a sense of who these characters were and what was happening. There's a few bits that I kind of lost me and I yeah. had to catch up a bit. Mm. Um, by the end of it, I'd caught up. Uh, a few bits lost me. A few bits were a bit uh, typical. A few bits anticlimactic. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. Which bits did you find anticlimactic? So the replicant with the moustache. Yeah. Um, He's at the start in the interrogation mm, room. Yeah. yeah. I, I expected him to be sticking around a bit, mm. a lot longer, and but he got pretty much killed straight away pretty quick. Yeah, he right? comes out and like starts bashing on Harrison Ford, yeah. and then the chick shoots him in the back of the head. And that's a head. very short scene. Very short. But the good thing about that is it also shows you that like he could have killed him instantly. Yeah. You know, if he wanted to. And he was about to. Um, and that's how quick it could have been. And that's mm-hmm. how quick things do happen in life. Yeah. Things aren't really dragged out, you know. Yeah. So in one aspect, I kind of like the urgency of it. But I feel like that character would have been nice to have a little bit more. But I think that but I think that kind of works in its favour too. Mm-hmm. Because it kind of you, makes you want more out yeah. of it, you know. And that's not a bad thing. But it's a kind of film that... The, the, the film isn't about the characters. It's more mm. about the investigation. And the setting, I suppose. And the setting, yeah. yeah. So, it's um, you have to look at it slightly different. Mm. Yeah, it's not your typical film where you can just sort of your casual viewer and be like, check out Blade Runner. That'll be what the fuck, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But yeah, how, how did you find the Harrison Ford character? Did you find him interesting? Did you like his character? He was a bit stale at times. It's mm. um, a good way of putting it. Yeah. A bit dull when you compare him to the Indiana Jones character or the mm. Han Solo yeah. at the time. Him as an actor, he can do some really good stuff. Mm. I've seen him do some amazing stuff. You know, especially when I like, in the early days when he was oh. doing westerns and stuff like that. Mm. Like, really cool. In terms of the dialogue in the film, there wasn't much to it. It was more about the direction in the film. Mm. So take away the setting and the beautiful mm. vision. The film itself, there's not too much going on. No. As we said, if you did it modern day New York or mm. wherever it might be, mm. it probably would have not worked at all. No, it's a very simple story, really. Yeah. And it's taken from a very abstract book by yeah. Philip K. Dick who was like a whiz mm-hmm. sci-fi whiz and his books are always very abstract you know very abstract and strange and I don't know why the, you know they always make films of his movies like Minority Report yeah. Total Recall you know so many films are made from his stories but it's a very very minimal story yeah. it's basically these robots or replicants but they're you know androids they want more life well the main one Roy Batty he wants more life and his little gang, you know, they all want to live longer. So they've come from some, like, slave camp or whatever you call it, out in space. And they've come back to Earth to find their maker. 
to get my wife, yeah. right? Did you get any of that? Can you yeah. remember any of that? I, I, yeah. I remember that. Wondering if that was clear in the film. The biggest thing that threw me off was the, their way of finding out whether they're a replicant or not. Mm. When you're looking at the future, when they've got all these new technologies, mm. surely they can just shoot an X-ray or something at these people <laughs> to find out. If they are. <laughs> they're gonna have something. Then it said, "Is this few whole you know, questions. interrogation and question, and we're gonna figure out whether surely there's a technology you can mm. just shoot." laser at them and oh, okay yeah yeah that's a really good point there's a tortoise lying on its back in the desert yeah do you choose to save it and he's like what's a tortoise so it's, like, it's like a turtle. turtle you know what a turtle is okay what yeah. was it there what's going on yeah and it's just like okay come on hurry up yeah you know yeah it's very funny because even their eyes are glowy all the replicants their eyes glow yeah so wouldn't that be an indication? I know, I know. It's a, it's the second 2049, mm. um, they tried to expand on that a bit, but still they have to look under their eye. And... Mm. This doesn't seem like the way it would be. If they, no, if we did have replicants, we would make it obvious. That's a bit, yeah, it is a bit, it's a bit flawed because mm. if they're meant to be so different to us in all these ways, mm. we'd be able to find out for I mean, sure. Yeah, we call them skin jobs. You know, mm. they call them skin jobs. Or yeah. is it is it just a, the fact that they are the same and it's just a reflection on society? Yeah. Is that how we're meant to be looking at it? Or I, I suppose it's supposed to dredge up that kind of fit, mm. you know, those ideas. Yeah. And like... You know, all this plastic surgery, maybe. You know, like people that get all this work yeah. done and, you know, they aren't really themselves anymore. And, yeah. you know, even like robotic limbs and, you know, like all that sort of stuff. It's sort of going into those areas and ideas of how much of ourselves do we have to change to become something else? Or yeah. are we always the same? Even if we have every part of our body's different, but our brain's the same. I don't know. Yeah. Sort of goes into those <laughs> ideas, like ghosts in the shell and shit like that. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, those concepts are always really cool. They're, ba- they're basically just excuses to talk about the human condition, you know, it is, yeah. in society. Very much so. Which is the good thing about them, the best part mm. about them. So what are your thoughts on the, the baddie at the end there? Yeah, Roy Batty character. Yeah. He's, I think he's perfect casting in that film. Mm. Like, there's not many films I know Rucker Howe from. Like, he, he did Lady Hawk and he was in Dark Knight, you know. Oh, Batman Begins. You know, he's been in been in films. I mean, I know him as an actor. But anyway, he's really good in Blade Runner. I mean, him asking his master for, I want more life, yep. you know, and all this sort of stuff. And he's very kind of like theatrical, like he's a stage actor. Mm. And, you know, his little um, famous saying at the end of the film, where he's like, I've seen things you people wouldn't believe, you know. Oh, that's right. yeah. Yeah, 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 like it'll all be gone like tears and rain, you know, all that sort of thing. And it's just... That was his idea, that that little, you know, that, not that whole speech, but a part, part of that speech, mm-hmm. you know, and that's, it's a very famous, quotable speech that he, that he makes. But that character, uh, it's great because, you know, it's sort of like, it's a good kind of allegory for, for us, you know, we, we want, yeah. we want more life. We don't want to die, you mm-hmm. know, we want to live. And if we had the chance to meet our maker, would we just say, no, that's cool. I'll die. Or would we go? No, please. Is yeah. there a chance that I could maybe live a bit longer? You know. <laughs> well, you know, looking at it now, mm. and we're starting to see tech companies come out that are trying to mm. unlock the secret of life. Of course. Um, it's that's probably more uh, appropriate now than it would have been mm. back in early eighties. Yeah. But yeah, I, I mean, him. I love the part at the end when he's in that building, Sebastian. You know, like there's that character, Sebastian, that takes in. Um, Pris, the other replicant, the mm-hmm. younger chick, she's the pleasure model chick, yep. and he takes her into his little toy kingdom where he makes all these little, you know, he's got all these toys and shit around. Yeah. And, the little men. Yeah, the little men. Yeah. I like all that. You know, it's really trippy. <laughs> yeah. It's like a fairy yeah. tale, you yeah. know, and it's really cool. I like all that. And then Roy Batty comes and, you know, and Harrison Ford, and he's chasing Harry around and you know, terrorizing him and howling at him and mm-hmm. playing playing with him, toying with him. And then, you know, he spares his life at the end, which yeah. is awesome yeah. because he has a chance to kill him and he goes, mm, no, he doesn't. He sort of respects him at the end. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's, it's you know, that's really cool. And the performances are really, I mean, his performance is better than Harrison Ford's. Like Harrison Ford mm-hmm. is really good in the film, you know, as a watchable actor that, you know, is watchable no matter yeah. what he does. But it's just understanding that character is not very well conveyed well, i think take away the the voiceover as we we're discussing before he mm. doesn't really say much no no he's a very quiet character yeah. throughout the whole film and yeah. <clears throat> i know him and ridley scott were 
didn't really have a good working relationship. They actually clashed because he was so used to being welcomed and helped on set by Spielberg and supported. Lucas. Yeah, and supported Francis Ford Coppola. Being like, heard. Yeah, yeah. Like he had that good support and, mm-hmm. you know, he was friends with all those guys. But then really Scott's like, you're an actor. You should know what you're doing. Yeah. I, I don't want to hear, you know, like really Scott it. was so focused on his job being a director. Yeah. He had no real input on what the actors should be yeah. doing. Well, they should just bring that to... He's not much of an actor's director. No, no, he doesn't really sound like it. Like, you've got to kind of take the reins and say, yeah. all right, this is my character, Ridley, I'm doing it. And he might be like, yep, brilliant. Or yeah. he might be like, no, change that. Or, yeah. you know, yeah. that sort of thing. Some actors might appreciate that, others might not. Yeah, like Rutger Hauer, I think mm-hmm. he really appreciated that space, being able to... Yeah. There's a few actors in it that just enjoyed being able to sort of create their own character yeah. and sort of just bring that to the table. And Experiment. It's like, yeah, like the other... Um, detective in it edward james almost the actor um he does this sort of uh language in the film called city speak which he mm. made up himself which is yeah. like a, an amalgamation yeah. of many different languages which is clever yeah which is yeah. such a cool idea yeah moving on to the, the reboot 2049 2049 my biggest issue that still annoys me to this day mm. all comes down to the editing. Mm. It was just too slow. The shots held for too long. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like went for like two and a half hours. Yeah, yeah. When it could have been a ninety minute film. Yeah. And it would have been a stronger film for it. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Yes, it was beautiful. It looked great. Mm. All the shots held for a very long time. I felt mm. I feel like just grabbing the the, the, the movie and just editing it myself <laughs> and rewatching it. Yeah, yeah. Because I'd like everything, to see that, everything just holds for like Three seconds too long. Yeah. It is a very, very testing film. Hey, some people might like that slow paced thing. Mm. As as beautiful as it was, personally I think it could have just it could have snappier. Been, yeah, it could have been snappier. Um, there's nothing wrong with holding shots a bit longer. Mm. But when every single shot's holding that long mm. for no apparent reason, mm. they don't usually if you hold a shot, there's a there's a reason at the end. You, yeah. you, you're wanting to watch that character to try and read their features, mm. or maybe something else is going to happen at the at the end of the shot. Or mm. it's usually about expanding on the human portrayal of of mm. the characters. Where this one was holding it for the sake of holding it, when mm. it wasn't really necessary, it wasn't adding anything to the story. Yeah. Yeah, I'm digging it. I'm digging it because I'm so positive on this film because mm-hmm. I'm biased. Yeah. <laughs> um, but even when I saw it the first time in the cinema, like I was like so ecstatic about this film. Mm. As I'm watching it, I'm like sweating. I'm that fucking yeah. into it. I'm like, oh my god, this is. I'm like tingling, you know, and mm-hmm. all that sort of thing. The music and the everything is just fucking. I'm like, it, wow. Cinematography was amazing. Oh, stunning. Insane. I saw it twice at the cinema. Mm-hmm. You know, so there you go, yeah. to show that. And the colours, just oh, beautiful. The palette, yeah. And yeah. like, like I've got a strong, pa- I've got a lot of patience, right? I can sort of sit through some shit. <laughs> and like Stanley Kubrick, I found the yeah. same. Very tedious, you know, like Barry Lyndon and uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey and Eyes Wide Shut. Huge films, you yeah. know, famous films. But they're all very dragged out, you know. But mm-hmm. Blade Runner, typically, 2049, is very dragged out. Yeah. Like a Ryan Gosling just standing there or walking from point A to point B yeah. and it takes five minutes or... Yeah. If this film was made 20 years ago, A, it wouldn't look as good as it does now. Yeah. Maybe 40 years ago. Mm. Then it'll make a bit more sense. Mm. But, I mean, we've all become, you know... So accustomed to the quick editing. Yeah. Yeah. Now with modern technology... I felt myself doing that. Like, yeah. I still do. When I watch it, I'm like, come on. Yeah. You know, like, I'm like, come on. You know, but... I have to just sort of let that go and yeah. just be like, all right, all right, okay, I got to learn to be patient. I got to be patient. All right, all right, and enjoy it for what it is. But I totally understand. Like mm. when I took my partner to see it the second time, I'm thinking she's not going to like this. Yeah, and I'm like looking at her the whole time. Like she asleep yet? She <laughs> asleep? She didn't fall asleep. She liked it, but yeah. I know she. I mean, she really liked it, but I know it's not something that she'd bang yeah. on about like I do. Yeah. She's not like, oh, it's my favourite film. <laughs> Just talking about the colour grading in this film. Mm. It's like Colour Theory 101. You know, when you look at a colour wheel, mm. it, it's a very Hollywood trope. But she, on a colour wheel, you look at the, the opposite colours on the wheel. Blue and orange. Blue and orange. Yeah. And this film uses that. As a massive strength, I reckon. Huge. Yeah. And there's films that 
do it incorrectly mm. and there's other films that do it well and this is one of those films that do it really well mm. you got Roger Deakins on DP like director of photography mm. and he's like the best in the biz and he did really well oh really well. stunning and all the effects work and mm-hmm. everything about the film is top class yeah I love the director. I'm like a massive fan of him. But sometimes in his films, I'm like, mm, you're testing me. Yeah. Come on. You know, the action scene was great, but it was very short yeah. as opposed to your 40 minutes of nothing. <laughs> the, the one scene I, I would have liked to be a little bit longer, but it's probably more just nostalgia than anything. Mm. The scene where they're having their big fight and you got like Elvis Presley and those yeah, people yeah, playing. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. love that scene. That was awesome. That was great. Yeah, yeah. I would have loved to see that last another five minutes mm. just to see the, the flicker of all these pop culture, yeah. 20th century really artists. Really cool. Yeah. It, was, it was really clever. I was, and I was enjoying seeing Harry throw them old man punches. Mm. Like, yeah. Like, you know, he's just like... It's... Wasn't, I wasn't sure why he was getting, you know, was so angry at the beginning. Because mm. he didn't really do anything to warrant being so angry. But I guess but... he's been secluded for I how many so. years now. Yeah. And he's been on the run. You know, he's been hiding out. He's yeah. paranoid. Yeah. He's, has, has, you know, he has no idea who this guy is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like... This is another problem and with the, the change. F- the change. There was a very quick change. Oh, actually, don't worry. Come yeah, yeah it was a very quick change. change yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's just be mates now. <laughs> <laughs> it's all on, good. Mate. Let's smoke some weed. No. <laughs> um, I just found it like that whole part. Like it takes him ages to get into the house, and mm. there's these traps and all this sort of thing. It takes yeah. ages for it to all happen, and then that all happens, and then it's just like bang, bang, bang. To the end but i felt like the film was very compromised by them revealing harrison ford in the marketing it if wasn't, he wasn't if you didn't know he was going to be in it and then he just came in at the last third oh my god because he was, wasn't in that much but it was nah. it would have been amazing really quick surprise great surprise. absolutely it would have been amazing and the original replicant lady she was cgi yeah yeah they had her rachel in CGI. what are your thoughts on cgi of her yeah like the first time i saw it i didn't i was like it was so quick in the lighting and stuff. I was like, oh, I couldn't really wrap my head around it. Yeah. But I know, like, it doesn't take me two seconds now. Like, when I rewatch it, I'm like, yeah, it's very cg I must admit, I knew that scene was coming because, mm. I mean, everyone was talking about it in the VFX world. Mm. The whole sphere were talking about it. So I mm. knew it was coming. I was waiting for that moment. Okay. Uh, the only thing that is uncanny valley for me is the, is the mouth. Oh, yeah, the mouth, man. And when she gets shot, her head sort of like wobbles like jelly. Oh, yeah. If you, yeah. If you watch back at it, you'll see her yeah, head. Just, yeah. It just... It doesn't look silly. right. No, doesn't it, look right. If you shot someone, they're going straight down. Their head's not going to fly back forward. Yeah, it's, a bit, it's like over animated. They're the main issues. We're getting closer. Like the eyes, they were fine. The skin, mm. fine. The mouth, no. Nah. The it's muscles a, aren't right yet. It's the same thing as... um. Like when I watch Rogue One, yeah, and Star Wars. yeah, all those, <laughs> and I'm like, even when they do the Marvel films and they de-age the actors, mm-hmm. like Michael Douglas and Michelle, you know, yeah, they had the Hulk. He was like a hybrid in the. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when, when you know that was fake as anything, but that kind of was yeah. light-hearted, so you could yeah, get away with you'd it. like whatever. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I don't care, <laughs> especially in Star Wars. Like you got dead actors that they're bringing back. Yeah, like the Tarkin character and, you know, uh, Princess Leia. We're not close enough to be doing that. It would have been, <laughs> maybe what they should have done for 2049 is that actually use real world footage from the previous film, mm. Roto chase her face out, mm. and then whenever she talks, just cut just cut to a different shot. We don't mm. have to see her necessarily talk. I don't even know why they needed to have her talk. Like, they could have just no, had... she didn't have to say anything at all, really. Uh, just have her looking and, and, then, and then cut it. Yeah. And then she, he goes straight away, you know, her eyes weren't that colour. Yeah, and then... yeah I, I just feel like that director, Danny Villeneuve, I'm surprised he did include it in the film because mm-hmm. I know he probably wouldn't be satisfied with it. Could have come down from higher up, that yeah, decision. Yeah, possibly. There's only a few shots where they actually did show her talk. Mm. The rest were shot from behind. When yeah. I think they should have just kept it all from behind. Yeah. We don't have to say, look how great we are, what mm. we can do all the time. You can how still... cool is the room, though? Yeah, the room with <laughs> all the reflective water. and It's like distracting you from the CGI. <laughs> and you're like, oh, what's... Yeah. The art design was amazing. <laughs> oh, insane. And the... I love the chick, the bad guy chick, who's mm-hmm. like um, after Harrison Ford or yeah. after Ryan Gosling. And at the end, and she's just doing these fucking kicks and punches and <laughs> shit. And I'm just like, fucking hell. She's, 
you know, it's really done well. Where it's yeah. like, I'm feeling the, the impact. Because most of the time when people are fighting and you've got fight scenes, it just feels yeah. very choreographed and yeah. like not connecting. and Just having the waves alone oh. like, adds the challenge. It's great. It was awesome. And like, it's so simple. It's not yeah. a massive ending. It's a very small ending. Yeah. It's not like, you know, like Star Wars or something where you have to have this big Three arena battles you, going on. Yeah. <laughs> Intercutting when, between three battles. When you've got a fight scene, there's this, this happens to be this arena type area yeah. where they're fighting on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This, <laughs> this like, level, we're, this we're game the, level. Yeah. It's like, we're in the waves. Fuck it. Let's fight anyway. Yeah. Oh, it's so cool. And Harry's like nearly drowning and <laughs> fucking Ron Gosling's, you know, has to save the day, and mm -hmm. I, I found him so good. I like Ryan Gosling a lot. Like yeah, I started, he's, great. he's, he's great. like he's one of those actors that I'm a, like a DiCaprio for me because mm -hmm. I started off hating DiCaprio because of Romeo and Juliet and Titanic yeah. when he was a teen heartthrob, and I was like, all oh, girls like I love Leo. And I was like, well, I fucking hate Leo. Yeah, you know, because <laughs> like you know, you all love him, and you know, you see him in everything. Yeah, I'm like just always. And then, hey ladies, look at me. Yeah, love me. It becomes this. <laughs> you know obsessed icon yeah. but then you know he gets a bit older and rougher and does yeah. does really interesting work and it's like Ryan Gosling with Notebook mm -hmm. all chicks you know yeah. have to see the Notebook and they're all like oh, I love Ryan Gosling it's and the then best I'm, film ever. yeah and I'm like oh my god and then when I got with my partner she made me watch it there's one genre of film I hate is romance yeah. right yeah. I'm yep. a boy. All right. What do you want from me? <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, I hate Fast and the Furious and I hate The Notebook. I'm somewhere in between. Yeah, yeah. I'm a Blade Runner guy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want from me? But yeah, anyway, Ryan Gosling. Yeah. He's yeah. another actor that sort of earned my respect yeah. as his career has gone on. Anything with him and Emma Stone. I'm happy. Yeah. yeah. Great. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're good. Good collaboration. Yeah. Crazy Stupid Love. Mm -hmm. La La Land. Yeah. They do some good stuff. She's great. Yeah. Yeah. She's good. Uh, any other thoughts um, on... Uh, yeah, it's a the, tedious film. The film plays with some interesting concepts that we've sort of seen get used a lot, which is about, you know, what is love? And, you mm. know, yes, we can love each other. We can love our pets. How far does that love mm. go? Can we love something that doesn't exist technically? Mm. But then do they exist? And then all those questions that follow. Yeah, there's some really cool moments, like the, the chick that creates dreams mm. for the replicants that ends up yeah. being Harry's daughter. Yeah. I loved that. I thought, and then when Ryan Gosling goes there and he's like trying to find out if it's actually him, yeah. that's the the child, and then he finds out it's not, and he just mm. fucking snaps. I love that scene when he's just like, "God damn it!" Yeah. And I was just like, "Fuck, <laughs> rewind, rewind, rewind." And I was just like, "Fuck," because he does, you know, it's a very minimal performance yeah. apart from like one part, and it's just like fucking hell. I was surprised about the amount of depth that uh, that hologram computer. Yeah. Woman yeah, yeah. Had she loved him or gave the illusion of love yeah, loving him? Yeah. And you know that whole that kind of sex scene where yeah, she's yeah, like yeah. with the prostitute. Yeah. And she's like, kind of blending into. That's really cool. That's yeah. clever. Very clever. Very cool. Strange, but very mm, fucking cool. Yeah. And I like strange. You know. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, more of that, please. Yeah. But it makes you think. You know, mm. like if would someone fall in love with something like this? That joy. J O I. Yeah. Joy. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I don't know. I guess we would. I mean, we when yeah. we get to that point, if I mean, we can communicate with them. Yeah, we're we gonna love, be in love with Siri. Yeah, I mean, if she was this supermodel-looking yeah. thing, that's you know, you can it looks communicate realistic. with, can turn her off. Yeah, <laughs> and we've had enough. <laughs> All right, can you please go? <laughs> yeah, I think I think we I think that would be a winner. Yeah. But that'd be that'd almost be the end of humanity there. I mm. think because so yeah. many people, especially in this day and age. Just can't be fucked with relationships. Yeah. They're like, oh, you're giving me shit. I'm out. You know, I can't be bothered with this shit. I'm out. I want to aspire to a, a career, and you know, I yeah. want to. I want to do all these things in my life. Just come, come and see me when I'm lonely, please. Mm, yeah. yeah, yeah, basically. And I think that's that's the mindset of a lot of young people these days. And I think everyone wants to be like an Instagram model, and everyone wants to be a gym junkie. Everyone wants to be like Thor and. Mm -hmm. You know, Wonder Woman. Everyone wants to have the sports cars and the the lifestyles. Yeah, these yeah. kind of they they want these celebrity lifestyles mm. and they want to mimic the celebrity life. Even if it's just to look like you've got you. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, it's all be. it's all a facade. Yeah. Like they all want to have this um, look. You know, yeah. it's like they must spend about eight hours in front of the mirror before they. So I don't even know if these chicks sleep at night or these mm. guys because they must spend like three hours or four hours in front of a fucking mirror before they even leave the house in the morning. Yeah. So are they up all night getting ready? I just want to kind of rag on that Instagram culture <laughs> at the moment. I'm just feeling like the need to. Yeah. But anyway, that's kind of what the Blade Runner thing's about though. It's kind yeah. of like, it's kind of 
a good kind reflect, of vehicle yeah. to reflect on all this bullshit. And... What's what is actually the good things about life? What are we f- here for? What are yeah. we fighting for? What yeah. are we living for? I guess that's uh, probably it for today. Yeah, yeah, we'll wrap it up. Make sure you jump onto our YouTube. Yeah, check out our videos. Like and subscribe and all that good stuff. <laughs> Other than that, we'll see you in the next one. Adios. <laughs>